Hello, welcome to another episode of Plug in India. Now, I've driven many electric cars for this channel over the years. I've driven the E2O, the E2 Plus, the Kona, the Tata Nexon EV. But this is the first time I'm getting to experience what electric car luxury actually means. Yes, I'm talking about the Jaguar I Pace. So, there is finally a luxury electric car option for all you electric vehicle luxury freaks out there. So today, we are going to be going on an exciting journey to the scenic hills of Pune. I'm really excited to experience this car and I hope you guys will join me on this journey. After an extensive period of research and development, the car went into production in 2018 in Europe and the United Kingdom. This is one of the most decorated cars ever. Deliveries of the Jaguar began in March 2021 in India. Please note that Jaguar is not selling the 320 version of the car here. It's only selling the top of the line 400 version. You can go to the Jaguar website and customize your iPace today. All right, so now we are sitting in the cabin of the iPace. When you sit in the driver's seat, you get all the information that you need at your fingertips. Here, you can see the state of charge, 72%. Here in the dashboard display, you can see the estimated range remaining, the watt hours per kilometer, and the distance traveled. One little touch that I like is that when you press the accelerator, you get a little blue bar over here that indicates that you're accelerating. Then when you decelerate, the regeneration is depicted via a green bar. Regarding regen, we have two settings, the high setting and the low setting. To change the regen setting, you go into settings, EV, and here you can choose high or low. When driving in the city, you typically choose high. When on the highway, you typically choose low. So as I'm driving this car, I can't believe that I have more than 340 kilometers of range remaining. The era of long range electric cars is finally here. Could we even imagine this five years ago? Two motors are located in the front and rear axle with no mechanical connection between them. This delivers an amazing all wheel drive experience. Together with the battery in the middle of the underflow, a low center of gravity is created, which further influences driving behavior. The Jaguar I-PACE's drivetrain has a torque vectoring system that intelligently transfers the right amount of torque to a specific tyre. This ensures you can turn into a bend at speed and there is fantastic grip. And, and speaking about the acceleration in this car, when I press on the accelerator, boy it takes off like a rocket ship. I'm not kidding. There are no gear shifts to worry about. Talking about regen, this car has two levels of regen, high and low. So the low level of regen uh, it's pretty much like a regular uh, electric vehicle in normal levels of region. Uh, you put your, take your foot away from the accelerator, the car gradually slows down. And then you have the high level of region, which is really powerful. You take your foot off the accelerator and if you're going, even if you're going really fast, 80 kmph, 100 kmph, whatever, the car slows down very, very quickly. So this variant that I'm driving right now is the HSE variant. This is the top of the line variant, which comes with air suspension. This means that you can increase or decrease the height of the car depending on the road conditions. It increases the height of the car by about 10 mm while you're driving in city traffic for better road handling. When you're on the highway like I am right now, it decreases the height of the car. So this car has a feature called active sound design. It has three settings, calm, normal and dynamic. So the dynamic setting actually produces fake petrol car sounds. I, however, am an EV purist. 
and I prefer the calm setting. Petrol heads, knock yourselves out. We are at the Shirwal fast charging station. The car has enough range, but so we don't really need to charge the car. But we wanted to show you guys how to fast charge the Jaguar. So here you can see there are two charging cables. This one is CCS, which we are using right now. And this one is Chadimo, which is not used in India. In order to charge the car, you need to download the Tata Power app. You use the app to scan the QR code on this screen. You have a wallet to which you add money. You pay the amount that you want for charging and then you start the charging. That's it. Easy peasy. This car has a single port for charging. This port. This car can charge up to 100 kilowatts. Currently, it is charging at only 25 kilowatt. We don't have the infrastructure to charge electric vehicles at 100 kilowatts in India. So here's the Jaguar badging. Now as you can see, the Jaguar looks like a distinctive Jaguar with its low slung roof line, gently curved bonnet and wide stance. What I like about the car is that it has a flow enhanced design. The car has a drag coefficient of 0.29. As you can see, the car has a very aerodynamic design. The front grille lets in air and it comes out through here from the bonnet scoop. And over here, you can see the radiator, which also lets in air over the car's underbelly. What many electric vehicle designers forget is that design is not the most important part of the car. The design needs to be its service of the car. So that's where aerodynamics comes in. Aerodynamics and energy efficiency are very, very important in an electric vehicle. The I-PACE scores very well in that department. Okay, so I know a lot of you people get excited about the front trunk in electric vehicles. You want to take a look inside, see what it's like. Well, the Jaguar, let me show you, has what we've seen for the first time in, a, in an electric vehicle in India. And that is the front trunk or the frunk. It's very small, as you can see, but you can still put in a couple of uh, shopping bags from your trip to a local supermarket. Okay, now let's take a look at the boot. To open the boot, here's what you do. You press this button. And that's it. No human intervention required. Now in here, you can see there's the spare wheel, quite big. But if you want even more storage space, you can push those seats back over there and then you will have nearly 1500 liters of boot space. You could go to sleep in there if you wanted to. I love it. Okay. All right, so here we are in the back seat of the I-PACE. Now the back seat is quite spacious because it lacks a transmission tunnel the way you have in regular ICE cars and of course you can enjoy the beautiful view from this infinity glass roof. Uh, as for leg space and head space, as you can see it's quite adequate but I'm not a very tall person. Uh, but I think even if you're uh, six foot tall you'll have, you'll be quite comfortable. Head space is of course more than adequate, there's a great deal of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely cabin. Uh, I, I think if you're traveling long distances, you probably won't even realize it. The I-PACE has some fluid reservoirs that need to be topped up regularly. There's the obvious stuff like brake fluid and washer fluid. And there's some unique stuff like the motor coolant and the battery coolant. You make sure that when you go to the service center, you get these topped up regularly. Now, on owner forums with the Jaguar I-PACE, we've not really noticed any issues over the last three years. There are minor issues like screen freezing and so on after OTA updates. But besides that, the battery seems to be performing very well. These are just some minor issues that you may have to live with.
here we are at the end of our journey at uh, beautiful Mapro Farm. We've just had a really nice lunch and uh, we're about to head back. I consumed about 250-ish watt hours per kilometer. Overall, we're very happy with the car. Uh, as you know, at Plug-in India, we mostly cover smaller cars, more energy efficient cars. So it was a unique experience to drive a luxury car. Couple of things to note. Number one, the fast chargers in India go to a maximum of 25, which is too low for this car. You will be standing for quite a while at a fast charger. 50 kilowatt charging station would be more practical. So we need more of those in India. Second thing, you need a seven kilowatt charging station at your home to be able to charge the car for any reasonable amount of time. 12 to 13 hours is what a 7 kilowatt charging station allows. Regular 15 ampere socket is not really feasible. So do take note of that. Besides that, it was an absolute joy to drive this car. You will not believe the number of eyeballs it attracts. It was a lot of fun and we had a great day. We hope you enjoyed this video too. If you did, be sure to like it and be sure to subscribe to Plugin India and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Ha, ha, ha.